So now it's theorems. Now it's not algorithms, now it's theorems. I'm going to take a graph and I'm going to assume there is a linkage and I'm going to look at the, at the shortest linkage, so the linkage was, that uses uh, minimum number of vertices. And then I'll study its properties until I can uh, extract, an extract an algorithm out of it. Uh, and the idea is the following. So the idea is that if I take uh, this minimum, you know, linkage with minimum number of vertices, I can sort of deconstruct it algorithmically. I can deconstruct it into parts. Uh, where in each part, I'll just be looking at the critical graph. Right? So I want to deconstruct my, my shortest linkage into bits where in each bit I'm just looking at the critical graph. Right? This part of the linkage is in fact critical in this, uh, this graph. And now, of course, I'm going back to my algorithm. The point is that the sets, the how to deconstruct right, the pieces, I can find algorithmically. Right? So you run an algorithm that finds the pieces, and then, and then you run the critical, critical graph algorithm in each case. So that's more or less the idea. All right, so, so let's, let's see how you deconstruct an image. Um, OK, so first of all, it's, uh, this is the picture we'll be thinking about for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, I have uh, my paths, and, and they're chosen with a minimum number of vertices. And then the vertices that are not used by the path, right, the graph is not necessarily critical, so no, I can assume it's not critical, so uh, there are some vertices not used by the path. Uh, and, uh, and so let me call them surplus vertices. Right? So I'll talk about vertices in the path, the vertices in the linkage, and surplus vertices. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you a few things that are almost true. Uh, so something slightly more complicated is actually true, but I'm, I'm going to restrict myself to things that are almost true. All right. So the first, uh, and then so the, the kind of the next uh, thing I want to do is analyze analyze how surface vertices can attach to the path. All right. So here we go. Suppose I have a path and I have a surface vertex. So I claim you cannot have uh, the, the surface vertex V cannot have a mean neighbor and an out neighbor so that the in neighbor is much higher than the out neighbor. Why? Because remember this blue path is part of a minimum length linkage. So let's reroute it. Let's go this way and then through my vertex V and down. And let's not change the rest of the linkage. That would give me a linkage with fewer vertices. Right? So I need to be, you know, in order for this to really be true, I need to save something. So I need to have you know, at least two vertices here that I'm losing and, and I'm adding one. Uh, so the true theorem is that uh, you don't have a, uh, you know, an in neighbor which is three higher than an out neighbor. But what we're going to s we're going to simplify it. We're going to say for every surface vertex and every path, first it has a bunch of out neighbors and then it has a bunch of in neighbors. All right. Uh, so this is uh, here. Right. I have. Uh, so so this is this is what cannot happen. This is what must happen. Uh, for every path and every surface vertex, the surface vertex first has a bunch of out neighbors in the path and then a bunch of in neighbors in the path. And I want to record the place where there's a changeover. Right? So, okay, I guess I should say, or maybe it only has out neighbors or maybe it only has in neighbors. But I want to record the place where, the place where there's a changeover. I'm going to call this change i of v. It's the changeover on path i for vertex v. All right? And I'll come back to this notation in a minute, but it's why I'm uh, dwelling on it a little bit. Okay, so this is the first fact that uh, every vertex gets this change over h so that above it, uh, all it has is out neighbors and below it, all it has is in neighbors. Okay, the next fact is the following. So suppose I have two vertices, u and v, and I'm looking at one path, uh, path called i, and suppose in this path, the change over v, the change over place of u is higher than the change over place of v. So I claim then, it's not allowed that u is adjacent to v. Why? Because, uh, so again, I'm going to reroute my path. I could go, I, you know, my, suppose the best linkage went just straight along the blue path. But what I could do instead is go down here, and then into u, down to v, back, and down along the blue path. So if there were enough vertices here in the middle, I saved them. I got, I got a shorter path that they can now combine with the rest of the linkage because both u and v are not used by the linkage. Both u and v are in the surface. All right, so that's not allowed. So of course, again, in order to make it true, I need to you know, uh, be careful how many vertices I have here. But to simplify, I will just say that if I have two vertices, 
so that u is adjacent to v, then the, the change of the change over of v must be before closer to s than the change over of u on every path. Okay, so now now that's good for us because uh, so we have this uh, change over i over vertex, change over on one path. I can look at um, you know the vector of change over places, but now I can order the vectors, right? I can always talk about you know on the path this change over being before that change over. But because of the theorem, actually, it did not make sense for vectors because it's the same on every path. Right? If u is adjacent to v, then on every path, the change over for v is before the change over for u. So I can talk about this vector for v being before this vector for u. Oh. And so and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a notation. OK, so uh, uh, this notation is something I need for the next slide. So let me show it to you. Uh, so I have a vertex v. I'll, I'll denote its out neighbors by a of v and its in neighbors by v, b of v, right? b of v is for before v and a of v is for after v. There's also a c of v in the general diagram, complement, but, but here we don't have it. Okay. So here's yet another thing that's impossible. Uh, so I have two vertices u and v, and u is adjacent to v, so the changeover change of v is, a close, is above the changeover of u, before the changeover of u. Now I claim I cannot have a surplus vertex which is adjacent from V and to U. I cannot have a surplus vertex like this. So why is that again? Because I could reroute, right? What I'll do is instead of going down along the blue path, I'll go, oops, I'll go down and then here into V, through W, back from U, and down. And if, uh, if this bit was long enough, then, and then again I saved, right? And all this is happening within surplus vertex. Uh, so, okay, so we proved that there is no surplus vertex which is an A of V, an out neighbor of V, and not an A of V. Now, I claim actually more is true. I claim actually this is true. Well, I, all that remains to check, all that remains to check is uh, vertices that are in the linkage, but that just follows from the you know, rel rel relative positions of the change over places, right? All the, all the stuff here, uh, that's precisely what, what I want. It's in, uh, in the out neighbors of the U and not in the out neighbors of the U, right? Probably actually more, more to the point. In the linkage, the out neighbors of V are here, and they're all out neighbors of U. All right, so this is the third fact. If I have two vertices, two surface vertices, U is adjacent to V, then the out neighbors of V <coughs> are a subset of the out neighbors of U. Okay, so now we're going to summarize this all. Right? So we had a bunch of almost true facts now. We have an almost theorem. And what the almost theorem tells you is the following. So first of all, for every vertex, there is a change over place. On every vertex in every path, there is a change over place. And then, uh, uh, so if u is adjacent to v, then change over v is before the change over u. That was the first thing we had. And then the next, <coughs> the next thing is, if I have u and v and u is adjacent to v, then the out neighbors of v are in the out neighbors of v. All right, so this is, uh, this is what we have. Okay, so we'll, we'll use this term. We'll use this term in a minute. Um, so maybe, let me just, uh, for reference, let me draw the, the main point here. So I have two vertices, and let's say, right, so this is his changeover, which means he is adjacent to this and from that. This is his changeover, which means he is adjacent to this and from that. Then the edge between them must hold this. That's the main fact. And also, there is no vertex like this. This summarizes this theory. Oh. So now, let's see what's next. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you how to, how to deconstruct the, uh, the linkage, right? so to, to, bring it, to bring it into this uh, critical subset. OK, so let me, uh, still, this is not number, this is a theorem. So let me take a bunch of surplus vertices so that, uh, you know, they're, they're changing. It's a sequence of surplus vertices, uh, and it's chosen in such a way that I cannot fit anybody with a change over place between two vertices in my sequence, right? Oh, actually, so, so let's, let's not have a sequence. Let's just take two vertices. Let's take two vertices u and v, and the change over of v is before the change over of u, and I'm assuming that nobody has change over in the middle. Right, I cannot fit anybody in the middle. So then I claim uh, 